Good morning, class. It's early. Today's a very special day. We don't get these very much in central Arkansas, but look. The campus is awash with snow. We have ourselves a bona fide snow day. So since no one else is here, let's go on inside and unbox the Smart Scope Duo. All right, let's go. All right, here it is, the Smart Scope Duo. It's dual eight inch video monitoring with built-in waveform monitoring for SD, HD, and 3G SDI video formats. So I'm gonna uh, unbox this and we'll see what we find. I have my unboxing kit, screwdriver, and Papaw's pocket knife. Papaw's pocket knife is used every day. That's nice. They give you a little handle for pulling it out, maybe. Is that what that's for? <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, that's what it's for. I guess because it's so hard, they give, gave you a little help. All right, the packaging is quite nice. There's a the manual and software come on an SD card right there. All right, we'll put this aside. Ooh, very nice. Very nice and thin. Okay, so there's the two monitors on the back. This is uh, Ethernet in and out. I'm assuming that this has an IP address um, and it functions in tandem with the ATEM. We'll, we'll find out how that works when I look at the manual. Uh, a traditional tally connector, SDI in and out for channel uh, monitor two. SDI in and out for monitor one, USB uh, likely for installing firmware, and then the, the power is a 12 volt power connector here. And then we have the transformer, and looks like fittings for all the various American and then the other internationals. So that's pretty nifty. Well, I live in the good old US of A, so I'm going to go ahead and slide that in. All right, so we have the power. We have the Smart Scope Duo. I'm going to next install it into the rack. The first thing I'll do is take out this power conditioner and move it down. I think since it has lights, and I won't need those lights on the dual uh, monitor because it provides its own light, then I'll move it down so that I can have the monitor separated from everything else a bit.
since it doesn't have a power button, when I apply power to the rack itself, it'll come on. I'm going to plug it in. Okay, moment of truth. Let's power this thing on and see what happens. It must have detected that it had no input source and shut itself off. Oh, powered off. It, they, they became blue for a moment and then powered themselves off. They're both blue. Off. Okay, that must mean I need to come up with an SDI power source and then we'll try it again. Well, I don't have many options because I don't have cameras yet. Uh, in fact, I don't, I, I've looked around, I don't have a single thing that outputs SDI. I've got a few things, uh, GoPro camera and um, my GH4 uh, and this Nikon camera that I'm using uh, here. They all output HDMI, but I don't have any uh, HDMI to SDI converters yet. So, I do have a mini converter analog to SDI. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open this, we're going to play uh, the Pirates of Penzance, my favorite musical or operetta. Um, loved it since I was a kid, Linda Ron Ronstadt's awesome. Kevin Klein and Angela Lansbury are both in it also. And then George Rose and Rex Smith are, um, are on the billing here too. It's so good. Man, it's so funny. So we're going to play that. It's not Blu-ray, um, but it won't matter because I'm using a composite output. Uh, so it's going to be composite output and stereo sound out into this analog to SDI. I've got a BNC converter for, or uh, uh, yeah, BNC adapter for the RCA plug here on the composite video. And then I've got... Um, TS, quarter inch TS adapters for, uh, to RCA for audio. So let's get Papaw's knife and start the unboxing. I don't know why I like to keep the plastic on the box, but I do. So I normally just fold the plastic back to open it. Open it upside down and it falls out. All right. Looks like uh, here, here's the mini converter. We've got composite and or it can also be the Y in your BY, um, uh, S, like your um, S video uh, input. But we're just going to use composite because this DVD player only has HDMI and composite outputs. So, uh, so we're going to use this, it says Y or NTSC PAL. So we're going to use that. And then uh, we won't use those two. We will use the quarter inch inputs for left and right analog audio. And then on the SDI side, it has S two SDI out. So that's nice. We get two dist distinct outputs which will be good. And then there's dip switches here and a table to tell us what they're used for. So I'm gonna, it says processing on and off. Let's assume that processing is necessary. I really don't know what that means. Um, if I want to use composite versus, uh, oppo as opposed to S-Video, then I need to have dip switch four turn to the off position. It says that if I want 
composite or S video, I have to turn five to on. So I need four off, five on. Um, number six is beta cam versus uh, SMPTE levels. I would assume SMPTE, but and then IRE. I'll have to look in the book. I'm not sure what IRE is. Uh, and then analog uh, number eight is analog audio versus AES EBU audio or digital audio. I'm gonna have so I have to have eight off. I have to have five on. I have to have four off, and everything else I'm going to leave where it is. Okay, so the dip switches are here, and they're they're numbered one through eight, and there's a little arrow that says down is on. So all of them are turned off at this point. I'm just going to then turn composites supposed to be off, so I'm going to leave those the same. I'm going to turn five on and leave that that off and leave that off so just turn five on is all i have to do i'm going to take papa's knife and five to the on position i need to choose the edison plug since we are in the united states and i'll put all this back in the box I'm making a video. I'm, you're now in the video. Cool. Okay, I'll unwrap the power cord and plug it in. It's a snow day today at school. Thomas, this is my son Thomas, my 11 year old Thomas, and he's in his coveralls because it's cold outside. We don't get snow that much. Have you been out in the snow a little bit? <laughs> yeah, good. All right, get out of my picture. Composite video. Left audio, right audio. Now, all I've got, I don't have any of my digital uh, coax, the RG6 stuff that I've ordered yet. So all I've got is this older uh, RG59, but it does have a BNC connector and it's not very long. So I'm hoping that we'll get something decent over here in the, uh, the Duo. Plugged in. Uh, let's see. Looks like the menu's running on the DVD. Let's plug this up. As you can see, things are rearranged a bit. And I found my problem. It was a silly mistake. This, I, I've been hooking up DVD players for years. I've never played with any of this other stuff. All the new stuff was right. It was the, the DVD player that I had plugged up wrong. So, at any rate, that was why we weren't having uh, success. But I did want to show you the software that came with the SmartScope Duo and uh, show you how I can make changes to that software. So, uh, under Applications, I have, on my Mac, I have this Blackmagic SmartView folder that was installed, and when I run the setup, it finds the SmartScope Duo because I have already plugged it in via the USB cable. Now, eventually, once we get everything in the rack, I'm going to connect them all with Ethernet and a little switch, and we'll have IP addresses for everything, and it'll make setup and, and maintenance a lot easier. But for now, I'm using the USB cable. As you can see, we've got the, the ability to choose what is displayed on the left and the right monitor. On the left monitor, the default setting is video monitoring, uh, SD aspect ratio 16.9, right? The right monitor, um, by default, was the same thing. So if you look at the screen, I have the DVD playing, and you can see that both of them are showing the same thing. The way I've got it connected, I have the um, SDI cable coming out of the analog to SDI mini converter going into the left side of the SmartScope Duo. And then I have a small, about 8 inch SDI cable jumping from the out of that back to the end of the second one. So the same signal is going to both. Uh, I was surprised to see, uh, not surprised, I was happy to see that there was 
uh, no discernible latency between the two screens. Of course, it's only a tiny little uh, cable, but still, um, we could have had a, a different outcome, so I'm glad that it's doing well. Um, if you look in the software, I can, uh, I, I can also, I'm going to leave the left monitor with the, the video, but on the right monitor, I'm going to change it. We can show waveform, or we can look at a vector scope of the video, RGB parade, YUV parade, histogram, or we can monitor the uh, audio. This is this is audio DBFS phase scope. Um, anyway, and then we've got um, audio DBVU as an option as well. All right. Well, guys, that was it. We have unboxed and set up the SmartScope Duo. This is the 4K version. Um, so I'm editing today's video, and I remember that we played the Pirates of Penzance DVD to prove out the SmartScope Duo, uh, and I have something special to show you before we go. This, my friends, is an original dated uh, January 3rd, 1981, Playbill from the Pirates of Penzance from the Ursus Theater. Little piece of history here. Really, uh, looking at the ads, everything, it's so fun. You, you, anybody uh, watching this remember that there used to be something called a Dotson? A Dotson. I had a, my friend's dad had a Dotson. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get to this. Is a ad for tribute with Jack Lemon and Bobby Benson, Lee Remick. There's Carol Channing. Let's see if we can find the billing. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Chrysler, the chairman of the board. All right, we've got to be coming up on it soon. We're hitting, aha, that's Lauren Bacall. Wow, 1981. That's a long time ago. Okay, so here, here's some pictures from the, from the play. Recognize actors. Now, this is Estelle Parsons here. And uh, in the video, it wasn't Estelle. Um, everybody else is the same. Well, there's Kevin Klein. And there's Rex Smith. There's George Rose. Where's Linda? Ron oh, and Linda Ronstadt. Okay, here it is. Ursus Theater. Kevin Klein. Yep. And Gilbert, Gilbert and Sullivan's Pirates of Penzance. 1981. Uh, there's a little profile of Gil Gilbert and Sullivan. So... This show, um, nine, or 1879, The Pirates of Penzance, 1879, isn't that a long time ago? There's the cast, Kevin Klein was the Pirate King. And then here is here are all of the numbers. I just thought you might be interested in seeing that. Well, it's been a great session with you today. I'm, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm hoping that if you enjoyed it, then you'll like the video or subscribe to the channel. Um, and then if you want to ask me a question or send me um, a suggestion, then will you send me an email to jamie at mrjamie.com. Very soon, I'm going to take these emails, the ones that are, are helpful, and read them on the air, and we'll talk about them together and maybe employ some of your suggestions on the program. So it should be a lot of fun. Thank you again. We had a great time today. And until next time... Mr. Jamie on campus. Mm -hmm.